So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand over to Mel now. Uh, so yeah, over to you. Great. Thank you, James. Thank you for the intro. Um, yeah, so today, as uh, James mentioned, I'm going to be talking about demystifying ASO on Google. Um, and I, the idea is to use real case examples uh, to showcase different stories I, I have to tell today. Um, but before we start, I wanted to give a bit of context of how I came across, uh, across this topic. Uh, in February, I had the chance to travel to uh, India with uh, Apps Week. We met a lot of clients over there. Um, and obviously, uh, well, in India, the Google the Play Store represents 98% of the market. So all the um, kind of experience that we shared with our clients were really focused on, on Google. And that made me realize how there's a lot of mystery still going on uh, with ASO on, on the Play Store. Um, and we had some great learnings from and great exchanges with clients there that really shared some uh, specific examples um, that I, I wanna share with you guys today. Uh, and hopefully that can put a bit of light into what's happening on Google and what influences the Google algorithm when it comes to um, ASO. So, whoop, there we go. Different topics that I'll be covering today. First, I'll talk a bit about the keyword density and how uh, that can impact your, your rankings uh, as an app. Um, I'll mention a few practical tips that might help you uh, optimize your conversion. Uh, I'll talk about retention. Uh, I have a really nice story there of how retention can impact uh, your rankings in, in Google. Um, and then I'll end on a short talk about uh, how the impact of tags on similar apps. Um, but before we dive in, quick intro of uh, you know, who I am and, and what is uh, AppTweak. So AppTweak, it's an ASO store, uh, an ASO tool, sorry, an app store optimization tool. Um, so basically what we do is we provide app publishers and game club publishers with um, data from the stores. Uh, and we try to make that data as insightful and actionable as possible. So the idea is that uh, with this data, the um, app marketers can measure the visibility of their app on the stores, how these apps are performing. Um, and then they can also take the right decisions to increase the visibility of their app and uh, hopefully um, in the end, increase organic installs. Uh, a few numbers on AppTweak, we follow more than a million keywords on a daily basis. Uh, we, follow, we have data for more than 3 million uh, mobile applications on both stores. The company's been growing a lot over the last years. Uh, we've doubled our number of employees uh, just in 2019. Um, and over the last two years, we've opened three new offices. So uh, last year, we opened an office in San Francisco, and this year uh, in Tokyo and in Bangalore. Um, so really exciting uh, journey. And really our mission is every day to build the most accurate, transparent, and easy to use uh, ASO tool. Um, we work with clients from across the world. So these are, we have more than a thousand clients. And this is just a, a little insight of some mobile leaders that trust us. And then maybe a quick word about me. Uh, so I'm Mel, I'm Chief Product Officer at AppTweak. Uh, so basically my role consists in to turning all this great feedback that we get from our clients and all the learnings that they share into features that actually make a difference. Uh, and so really valuable features that can help uh, clients in their ASO uh, process and, and make it easier, more transparent, uh, and maybe quicker uh, as well. I've got two years experience um, consulting top tier app and game publishers in ASO, on ASO. And I have previous experience in the app business and in the SaaS business. Uh, and I love chocolate, but only dark chocolate. Um, we're from Belgium, and so chocolate's a big thing here in Belgium. Um, great. Um, so that's it for the intro. So now I really want to dive into uh, the topic of the day. Um, so I'll start with uh, the whole um, how keyword density can impact your rankings. Um, the first thing, um, the first story I wanted to share is uh, with Priceline. Uh, so what we found is that Priceline on January 27th, they updated their description. And so here you can see um, uh, basically the description that they used to have on their apps listing and the one they have um, today. Uh, and so 
uh, what I wanted to do is kind of compare uh, what changed in terms of keywords uh, between these two descriptions. So what I did is I copy pasted each description uh, and I pasted it into our uh, keyword density calculator. Um, this is actually a free tool that I really recommend you guys to use. So I put the link down here, um, but uh, yeah, it's a tool that's available for free. Um, and so what happened, I copied the, the, the first description, pasted it here, um, and the tool basically returns uh, the number of times that a keyword is repeated in a description and the density. Um, just a quick word on what we mean by density. Um, density is the, basically the number of times a keyword appears in a text divided by the number, total number of keywords there is in that text. And so on Google, the, the higher your density, well, the more importance you're giving to that keyword in the eyes of the Google algorithm. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, the longer your description, the more times you will have to repeat the same keyword to maintain the same level of density. Um, typically on Google, we recommend to have a density, uh, like a good density is a density between one and 2%. Free is really high. Um, and above that, you start getting into keyword stuffing. So, you know, a density of four or 5%, that's, that's too high. Um, and so uh, I won't recommend uh, going too high because uh, otherwise, Google um, frowns upon that and considers that keyword stuffing and that actually penalizes uh, your app. So what I did here again, if we come back to Priceline, I took the description, I pasted it into this tool. Um, and what I see is um, that the big change there was before and after uh, was in terms of uh, these keywords, uh, rental cars and car rental. So um, in the previous description, uh, they had the keyword rental cars uh, repeated seven times with a nice density of 2.8. And in the new description, uh, well, the rental cars was actually replaced. Some of them were replaced by the word car rental. So you see here that this, the density um, really went down from 2.8 to 1.9, but they've added the word car rental. Uh, and so that keyword density uh, obviously went, went up. So then I wanted to have a look at, okay, now what was the impact of that change in terms of rankings? Um, so what I did is I took a list of 30 keywords uh, that include the words rental cars and the words car rental. Um, and then I looked at the visibility of Priceline on this set of 30 keywords. Now, before I get into explaining the results, which I think are quite evident on the screen, but um, just a quick word on what, what I mean by visibility. Um, so visibility is what you see here. Um, basically what it does is it looks at uh, how an app ranks on a set of words. So here on these 30 keywords. Um, and if you see any, if the app has a positive uh, increase in rankings on a keyword, well, that is gonna increase the, the level of visibility. And that visibility is weighted uh, by volume, which means that if, there's, uh, if the app uh, increases its ranks on a high volume keyword, that's going to have a huge impact in the visibility that you'll see like really increases like we see here. Whereas if the app ranks better, uh, starts to rank better, but on low volume keyword, you, that's not gonna impact the visibility so much. So just to say that if I, I looked here, you know, at the visibility of Priceline on these words that contained car rental and rental cars, and I saw that was like right after uh, Priceline implemented the change in description, we can see there's a a huge uplift in visibility on this set of 30 keywords. Now, if I look a little deeper into like what actually happened, well, I can easily identify what were the top keywords with the best ranking progressions and were there any keywords where Priceline actually lost visibility. This is still on this list of 30 keywords that contain car rental and rental cars. And what I see is, well, all the keywords that had a really good ranking progression were all words that contained the word car rental, uh, like you see here, um, some really big ranking movements. Um, and there were actually two keywords for which Priceline lost visibility. And those were the words that had the keyword rental cars, which if you remember, was actually the words that, um, that those were the words that lost um, in density when they did the change. So it's just to give you kind of an idea of really keyword density does have an impact on, on your rankings. Um, and I always use a second example. So this is a, another example to illustrate that. 
Um, this is an Indian app. It's an Indian card game. It's called Teen Patty Gold. Uh, and basically, uh, they were also doing some tests on their description. They were running an A-B test in January, comparing different versions of description. And on the 24th, they implemented uh, this version, which was the winning uh, version. So I did exactly the same exercise. I took both the description that was before the A-B test and then the one that uh, they implemented now. Um, and what I see is, um, again, comparing the density level of all these keywords, uh, there's one keyword that really increased, which is the word rummy, that used to be only two times in the description. Uh, and in the new version, it appeared 13 times. And so the density went up 2.1 to 2.1%, which is really high. And so again, I wanted to have a look like, okay, how did that impact Team Paddy Gold's rankings on keywords that contain the word rummy? Um, it was actually interesting to see that um, after that change, uh, Team Paddy Gold started to rank on more than 128 keywords that contained the word rummy. And so I run my analysis on those 128 keywords. And again, I can see that uh, the description, uh, sorry, the visibility of Team Paddy Gold on this set of 128 keywords um, significantly increased uh, right after the new description was uh, implemented. So that's the uplift you see here. Now, obviously I wanted to go deeper into this analysis and for the sense of this presentation, uh, I, I couldn't you know, analyze all the 128 keywords. So I just focused on the top four with the highest uh, volume. Um, and that's what, oops, sorry. So that's what uh, uh, you see here. So what I did is I took the top four keywords with the best volume uh, that had the word Rummy, and I looked at how was Team Paddy Gold's progression in terms of ranking on these words. And as you can see, well, before the change was implemented, Team Paddy Gold ranked like near the top 10 uh, results on, on these words, these are high volume keywords. Um, but after the description was implemented, the new description was implemented with a higher density on the word Rummy, uh, well, you can see this a really significant increase in rankings. And today, uh, Team Paddy Gold actually rank, ranks within the top 10 results uh, for these words. So again, another example of how, you know, increasing the density of a keyword in your description can really impact your rankings on, on Google. Um, but that's great. But again, lots of our clients, uh, they, when we show them these kinds of results, they're like, okay, that's cool, but how does that translate in terms of downloads? Uh, because most of the time, well, your manager, all he wants to know is what is the impact on, on downloads in the end. Um, and so that's something that we also estimate in, in AppTweak. So we can estimate the number of installs that a particular keyword can bring to your app uh, in, in a specific country. And so here again, I looked at, I compared the numbers before and after the change. Um, and so we can see that on these four keywords only, um, the impact of that ranking increase uh, translated into about more than 200 daily installs um, just across these four keywords. And that translates into more than 7,000 monthly installs. So that is like a, a big impact when it comes to what, you know, number of installs that you win in the end. And uh, if you look a little deeper into the detail, um, most of this growth is actually driven by the word Rummy uh, because it's a very high volume keyword. Um, where, you know, Team Paddy Gold used to rank 13, now it ranks number eight. And just that change of rank, we estimate translates into nearly 200 uh, extra daily installs just from the word uh, Rummy. So really main takeaway here is that keyword density really has an impact on your app's rankings uh, in the Play Store. Um, of course, uh, because you know density is about writing uh, key, repeating keywords in your description, you won't be able to have a high density on an infinite number of keywords. So you really want to focus on a couple of keywords that you think are going to work best for, for your app. So you want to select the most relevant and avoid uh, focusing and targeting keywords that are too competitive. And then unfortunately, you won't get it right the first time. So I really recommend you to iterate, which means that um, you know, next time that you think of your description, choose the words you want to repeat a lot and then measure as soon as that description goes out, monitor the results and see what is the impact. How did your rankings for those keywords change uh, after you implemented the new description? And if you don't see any significant impact, 
then that means that the keywords you chose chose weren't good enough. And so then I, I recommend like reiterating, starting again, replacing the low performing keywords with other keywords um, and keep doing that until you get a, a nice set of high performing keywords for your app. Great, so um, that's it for the keyword density part. Um, as James said, I'll be I'm more than happy to take questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So feel free to note, the, note them down and then I can address them later on. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is a few practical tips to uh, increase conversions. There's nothing mind blowing here, but I thought it was really nice to see these little examples uh, that we saw really worked for uh, apps that we worked with. Uh, the first one is about, uh, the working on your screenshots. Um, this is an interesting case that we had with a, a wedding planning app <clears throat> from India, which is called Wed Me Good. Um, and so um, it's very popular. It, it's actually the number one wedding planning app in India um, uh, until today. Uh, and it was consistently ranking number one on the keywords, Indian wedding planner, Indian wedding planning, wedding planner and wedding planning. But lately, uh, they've seen this other app, which is actually an American app uh, called MyWed, um, has recently overtaken them and is now today ranking number one on the keywords wedding planner and wedding planning. And so they asked us, how can we uh, retake that position? Um, well, obviously, my first reflex was to say, well, keyword density. Let's have a look at your keyword density. And so we compared the title and the short description and the descriptions of these two, two apps to see if they were you know, using the words wedding planner and wedding planning um, enough. Um, and actually they, well, they were. So here you can see these are the, uh, we're comparing here the title and short description of both apps. And you can see that they're using uh, the keywords wedding planner, wedding planning everywhere, like in their title, in their short description. Um, they're actually sharing a lot of keywords in common. And when I ran the two descriptions, um, actually the Indian app, so Wed Me Good, had a higher level of keyword density on these uh, wedding planner, wedding planning keywords than the MyWed app. So again, what this means is that, well, keyword density is important. It's a good way of telling Google, hey, these are important keywords for my app and of making sure that your app ranks on those words but it's not the only element that influences. And um, obviously when it comes to defining which app ranks above who on, uh, in the store, other elements come into account. And these elements are typically the downloads that your apps are driving, um, the conversion of your app and the retention of your app. Um, and so one thing that we looked into here is like, okay, since keyword density isn't the problem, then something else is happening. Um, and we thought it was linked to uh, the conversion that Wedding Me Good was having on the words we um, uh, wedding planner and wedding planning. And so we had a look at the, the, um, the screenshots of this app and compared it with their competitors. Uh, so here, these are the screenshots of the Wedding Me Good app, um, and these are the screenshots of the My Wed app. So as you can see, they're, they're pretty similar. Um, you know, kind of the same idea of uh, each screenshot is featuring a feature, like uh, showcasing a, a feature of the app with this uh, very clear uh, message above each, each section. Um, but there is a difference into what they're actually featuring. Um, and so the MyWed app, well, there's four things that they're showing here. First of all, it's a countdown to the big day. So, you know, from today and the wedding day, how, may, how much time is left. Second, there's a checklist management, so you know, kind of task management list. Then there's a budget monitoring uh, feature, and then there's a guest list manager as well. And when you think of it, you know, for someone who's looking for a, a wedding planning app, well, these are probably four very important features that they're looking for uh, when they're kind of browsing through, through the store. And so um, this is really what can make the difference, is they actually, the features that you're showing to your users um, when they're looking for a, an app like yours. Um, another example to illustrate is Booking. Uh, Booking.com, they ran this A-B test on uh, screenshots in February, and they were testing exactly the same screenshots, but in different order. Um, and the free screenshots they were, they were testing, so they're testing the order of the first free screenshots, which each had a very different message. Um, one was find deals in every destination, the other was one, more than 1 million hotels, apartments, and more. 
And then the third was get paperless confirmation. And so um, the test that we're running was just exactly those screenshots, but presented in different order um, to see which one uh, drove the most uh, conversion. And so um, the, this, uh, this is the version here that was uh, implemented. So this was the version that uh, supposedly performed best. Um, and so the learning, it seems, is that while well, the arguments that are most convincing for the booking audience is variety of choice and paperless confirmation. And those two are actually more important than getting deals in every destination. And so again, that's a great learning for bookings to really understand, okay, what is the message that resonates the most within um, my audience? So that's for the screenshots. Um, another quick tip is uh, concerning emojis. Um, emojis, they really can make uh, a difference. And if I go back to that case uh, I was talking about, uh, about Wed Me Good and My Wed, uh, when we were comparing the titles and the short description, looking at the keyword density, um, well, there was something that did uh, draw my attention. It was that my wed, um, they had this little emoticon in their title. Now, again, this might look like uh, some you know little detail, but this is the kind of element that can really make a difference. Um, this is the kind of element that really draw the attention of the user and make him click on your app to get more information. Um, and so another example uh, with emojis uh, is with Tasty Town. Um, Tasty Town, it's a restaurant simulation game uh, and they've used a lot of emojis in their uh, metadata. So this is their title and their short description today. And you can see there's some nice little uh, food related emojis uh, in there. But again, I really wanna insist here that this is not like a random choice they made. This is really a choice they made after dutifully testing and running lots of tests as to which version uh, with or without emojis worked best. And if we look at the title history of uh, Tasty Town uh, in 2000, uh, over 2019, we can see they did a lot of changes um, and they've really been testing different types of title and titles with and without um, emojis. Now, just one thing here, um, on Google, uh, on, on the Google Play Store, obviously you can't test, A-B test uh, a title. Uh, so what they've been doing is really some like uh, sequential tests. So putting one title, then another, then back to the first one and see which um, a version performs, uh, performs best. Uh, and so these are like the different, you know, sequences that they've been testing. And so today uh, they kept the one with the, the little burger and fries emoji. And when we look at their short description, again, they've been doing a lot of testing here as well. Uh, so you can see that they test different context, uh, different content, sorry. So different, you know, um, content in the short description, different text, but then they also check, test with and without emojis. So the same text with or without emojis. Then they test different emojis. So the same text, but with different emojis. Uh, and they even test the order of the emojis, you know, having it at the beginning, having it at the end, in the middle of the sentence. So you can really go very far into this. Uh, of course, it does require time, it requires a lot of patience as well, and it requires a lot of analytics and measuring results. Um, so, it, it, you know, it's not that easy. Um, but it, these are little things that can really drive your, your conversion up. And then finally, uh, again, re regarding um, conversion is about, um, I want to talk about videos. Uh, the thing is with video is that we kind of take it for granted that they uh, increase conversion, especially since Apple and Google have released uh, the, the videos on autoplay. But that's not always the case. Uh, and for sure, you know, having a nice video that starts playing, it's really catchy. It can really draw the user's attention. Uh, or make him want to click on an app to see more about it. Um, but it can also be very distracting and it can even be very frustrating when you come to think of it, if the user doesn't have a good Wi-Fi connection um, and the video starts lagging, it can actually create a lot of frustration too. So um, what I did is I wanted to show you a couple of examples of apps that have been A-B testing their app listing with and without video. Um, and that actually retained the version without video, supposing that you know, this version was the one that performed best. And so this is Expedia. They've been running an A-B test in January where they tested the app listing with a video and the app listing without a video. 
And the final version retained was actually the one without video, as you can see um, here. Exactly the same with Six. Six is a car rental app. And again, um, they, they've been testing the app listing with and without video. Uh, and they kept the version without the video. So suggesting that this one was the one that performed uh, best. Um, another example is with Headway. Headway is an app that uh, basically summarizes the content of books uh, within 15 minutes. And so they, again, they would have this video, they tested their app listing with, without video. Um, and the one that performed best was the one without video. Now, obviously I'm not saying here that you should all scrap your videos. Um, this is not something that works for everyone, uh, but is it interesting to see that um, videos don't necessarily increase the conversion for all apps? Um, and actually this analysis um, goes a bit further. Um, so this is just a, a few examples. But what I did is I had a look at all the apps in the US, I only looked at US apps, but I looked at all the apps that um, in 2020, so over the last three months, ran an A-B test, testing the app listing with video and the app listing without video. And what I found is among all those apps, five out of 10 chose to, kept, to keep, sorry, the, vid, the version with the video, and five out of 10 um, actually choose, chose to um, keep the version without the video. So I was really surprised by that result, that it's a really 50-50. Um, so I really recommend you to test the video that you have um, test your app listing without it uh, and see if, um, you know, what happens in terms of, of, of conversion. Um, also, uh, keep in mind that, you know, things change very quickly on the store uh, in terms of creatives, uh, you know, trending creatives change, tend to change very quickly as well. Um, and so maybe the video that was working uh, six months ago when you implemented it doesn't work so well anymore today. Um, so that too is really important to, you know, uh, don't take for granted what worked six months ago, keep testing and keep retesting your hypothesis. And maybe, you know, today uh, you're going to implement the version without video because it works best, but maybe in three months you have this whole new video that is actually going to work uh, much better. So just keep testing. Uh, it's something that you consistently have to, um, you know, um, retest and uh, reassure. Um, great, so uh, quick summary on the um, tips for conversion. The first regarding screenshots, um, make sure that the screenshots that you show on your app are the most convincing for your audience. Uh, so you really want to highlight the most valuable feature of your app. Um, for each feature that you showcase, you want to add a clear message uh, to users to really show, okay, this, this app does this, um, and test the order of those messages. Uh, to see which are the ones that are most appealing to your users. Emojis can make a difference, uh, so test it. Check for your app, uh, is it worth adding emojis to any textual element of your metadata? Um, test with, without emojis, but also test different emojis, the order of emojis. Uh, um, you can really go far into testing if you have the patience. Um, and then videos, don't take them for granted. Uh, so videos don't always um, increase conversion. Um, so check what works best for your app and also um, check what your competition is doing. Uh, it's amazing the, the amount that you can learn from your competitors. Uh, they can inspire you, they can give you ideas, um, but you can really learn a lot from them. So make sure to always check what they're doing uh, as well and see if it's worth implementing any ideas for your app too. Great. Great, thanks, Mel. That was that was really good. Uh, so we're going to do some Q and A now. Oh, sorry, uh, you you're still you're not at the end, right? This is the third section. No, I'm not at the end, but we can already do a few. Well, I can um, do a Q and A now, and then I can. Yeah, that's a good idea. So we're going to go on to retention. Well, let's let's take a few because yeah, we've had a few on these. Um, oh. You know, specifically on what you just covered. Okay. Um, so um, you know. Um, a few couple of people question on um you know how do you calculate the, the keyword density is it just purely number of words you know what how's what's behind that calculation yeah so really what it is is um basically how you weight a keyword um in a in an overall text and so um just like basically what you would do to calculate the density is you would take the the keyword 
check how many times it's repeated in your text uh, and divide that by the number of keywords there is in that text. And that gives you kind of a percentage um, that gives you an idea of the, the density that you're giving to a specific keyword. And so what I mean is that the more you repeat a keyword in a text, then obviously the higher the density uh, you're gonna give. But if you have, the longer your text, well, the more you will have to repeat that keyword to maintain the same level of, of visibility. You know, if, you're, if your description is five sentences long and you repeat a word five times, that's already a lot. But if your description is a thousand uh, sentences long, um, repeating a word five times is not, does not have the same level of density, obviously. Got it. And um, someone's saying, well, look, um, for some, some of the, say, video editor apps, they, they're calculating very high keyword densities, up to 13%. You know, are they really getting punished, you know, for that? It doesn't look like it. Well, um, again, this is Google. Uh, so, and I mean, App Store is, is probably is mostly the same, but yeah. they have guide rules um, that they, um, they, that they recommend. And so one thing they really don't recommend is uh, keyword stuffing. Um, and obviously you can try it out. You can try like really stuffing keywords and see how it works out. Uh, but I really wouldn't recommend because there is a, a high risk that um, Google or Apple will kind of um, uh, identify that and then stop making your app rank on, on that specific keyword. Well, I mean, we've seen it uh, and we've seen it typically uh, with densities that go above four or five percent. Um, but we've also seen apps that, you know, they, they clearly do keyword stuffing and they're still there in the store. Um, so it kind of depends on, you know, how strictly Google decides to um, implement that rule. But um, I would definitely not recommend take the risk. Well, I guess it depends on the, you know, the other factors. If you're clearly the number one video editor app and have a great, you know, amazingly, you know, uh, you know good good app then you can probably get away with that more than if you're a new entrant or you know you, you don't yeah um and for dan is asking well how how do you know if you is it how are you working out the, the visibility of a keyword yeah um so that's kind of a, a so basically it's a little more complicated than that but um just to simplify uh how you would calculate uh the visibility of your app on a list of keywords what we do is we look at how your app every day, we look at how your app ranks on this set of words. Um, and then we look at the next day and then we kind of compare what happened between the two. If you've increased your rankings on high volume keyword, um, then you're going to see a big increase in visibility because obviously you've been increasing your rankings. So you're more visible, but also you're more visible on high traffic keywords. Um, if during that same time period, imagine that, uh, you've actually done the same rank increase, but on much lower volume keyword, well, the visibility score will increase slightly, but not as much uh, because, well, it's nice, you're ranking better on keywords, but these are low traffic keywords. So in terms of visibility, your app isn't getting as much visibility as it would have if you had the same rank, like the same rank change, but on high volume keywords. Got it. And what about keywords being sort of near the top uh, of the description? Is that, is that an important factor? Um, yes. Yeah. So I think um, in, not directly in terms of ranking. So it's not that, you know, because you put that keyword first, that, um, that Google is giving, in, that you're giving it more weight or from, from a Google algorithm point of view. However, you have to keep in mind that when people um, see your app listing, um, they will only see the first sentence of your description. And so you definitely want to put, you know, relevant keywords in there and, and especially like a catchy uh, sentence there because that's what most people see. Another thing to know is that something that does um, uh, impact the, your, your rankings is how you convert on a keyword. So if you're an app uh, that converts really well on a specific keyword, well, um, that is going to have a good impact on how your app ranks for that keyword. And typically, uh, if people are on your app listing and you know, they see uh, this keyword that's really relevant for them uh, in the first sentences of your description, and then they install your app, uh, well, that's, that's, gonna, that's, that's a good message for the Google algorithm that says that, you know, this guy, you have a high conversion on that particular keyword. Got it. And um, Eleanor's asking, well, what about the ideal? How do you determine which keywords to focus on? 
yeah that's um so i could i could talk hours on that we could um, do another workshop on that say, yeah i'd say um there's three three or four gold rules um i kind of think of them as as i go but number one is make sure you choose relevant words uh, obviously you want to choose keywords that are really relevant to your app um, but then you want to look at the volume of those words uh, do these words drive traffic or not you want to look at the difficulty which is who else is ranking on these words uh, and you know what is your chance as an app to compete against the other apps that are ranking there um, obviously uh, i always like to look at um, are the apps that are ranking on this keyword similar to my apps and that also gives me an idea of how relevant that word is for, for my app um, and also are these like huge apps like i'm going to be competing against i don't know snapchat facebook whatsapp well, that's probably a much too general keyword. So then uh, you want to like think of maybe longer tail keywords with that aren't that competitive, uh, but it's still very relevant for your app. So typically the example I like to give is, I don't know if you won't go after the word food, uh, that's way too general, but you might want to go out to after the word uh, local food delivery. Um, and so, you know, kind of think of keywords that have this nice balance between relevance uh, good traffic, but not too competitive. Got it. And um, few people, we'll just do a few more if we can. A uh, few more people asking, okay, in terms of, you know, uh, doing these experiments, how long should you leave it? How much tinkering should you do between updating the publishing and doing something else? Yeah. So um, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and, and also it's, unfortunately, there's not like black or white answer. But what I would definitely recommend is to wait at least one week because I think all apps do have a, a weekly seasonality. Um, typically gaming apps, um, well, people download, tend to download much more games, any more games during the weekend and during the week. So if you're running your A-B test on a Tuesday and then you decide to get the results by Friday while well, you're actually missing out on this big you know, uh, audience that is during the, the weekend, which is probably your main audience as well. So you definitely want to wait at least one week. Um, and then I guess it's more like wait, well, you know, Google kind of indicates when they think they have enough results to um, implement a change. So you might want to definitely want to wait to see what, when Google says that they have enough um, results to, um, yeah, to recommend a version A or version B. But if that becomes, if that appears before one week, I would still wait for the whole week to go by. And in terms of that description, do you recommend using the full 4,000 characters? Um, yeah, that's a, a great question we, we always have as well. Um, again, um, I would really write my description based on having that keyword density element in mind. Um, and no, I would not like, also have it with a user in mind like what is it that you really want to say in your description what is worth mentioning um and once you have that okay are there a few little tweaks that you might have to do to increase you know your keyword density on important keywords but then leave it there don't you know start repeating stuff and 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 you know just saying stuff just to get to those four thousand characters um so no i i don't recommend to like systematically go up to the four thousand characters um Generally, from what I've seen, typically descriptions tend to go around a thousand, two thousand characters, and that's fine. Sometimes descriptions are just three sentences long, um, and that's okay if you don't have much to say. And if you put like one keyword three times, that's already going to give that particular keyword like a high, a high keyword density as well. So I would just, you know, write what you want to say and then tweak it to make sure that you have this nice keyword density on important keywords but don't write it just to have those 4,000 characters because the more you go, the larger your description, the more you're going to have to repeat the same words uh, if you want to get a high density. So it's going to get harder as well. Okay, great. Well, um, I think we'll pick up some more of these. Let's make sure we get through the presentation and uh, yeah, we'll take a few with some more questions at, at the end. Yeah. Great. Thanks, James. Um, so yeah, this is definitely a story I want to uh, make sure that we cover um, on retention. Um, basically, so I've talked about keyword density, I've talked about conversion, but retention, I think, is by far the most determinant ranking factor on, on, on Google Play. And I want to share a story that um, a client shared with us that I think is, is, is really nice. Um, this is a sports app in India. Uh, it's a very popular sports app. You won't recognize the icon because uh, they've asked to stay anonymous. 
And so this is an icon that I randomly made. So it's not a real app icon. Um, but just, a, a, yeah, so what happened with this app? Um, this is an app that does active ASO on Google. Um, they really work on there to optimize their keyword density, to optimize their conversion density. But one day they noticed this huge spike in overall keyword rankings and a significant increase in, in category, rank, category ranking um, as well. Um, and so they were like, what happened here? Um, they had made no change, uh, no typical ASO change. So they didn't change any screenshots, video, or anything that I've been talking about up, up to now. Um, and so they were really wondering like, what, what happened here? And then they realized that a few days before they, they noticed this, um, this big bug took place in the app. And so there was this bug where the app would freeze and the only way to get it working again was to uninstall and reinstall. Obviously they fixed the bug as quickly as possible, but that day, um, what happened is that 300 users uh, in, uninstalled the app and then reinstalled it to get it working again. Um, and these were, of course, very sticky users, very loyal users, users that were actively using the app um, beforehand. So I'm going to name that day, that bug happened, day D. Um, and what happened is, well, obviously, after day D, on day D plus one, day D plus seven, day D plus 15, well, the retention rates for this app were really, really high because there was all this bunch of users that suddenly reinstalled the app that uh, were obviously retained because these are typically loyal users for the app. And they actually saw their retention rate go up to 95%, um, which was huge uh, uh, for them. Um, and so, yeah, and, and so this client told me, and the impact that we saw in terms of visibility on the store was amazing. Um, and so I kind of went back into the data to have a look. And I took a bunch of keywords that are, um, you know, high volume sports related keywords. There's a couple of uh, big sports app names there. So fan code, ESPN, WWE. And I had a look at how this app, uh, the keyword ranking history of this app on the, all these keywords. And so um, here, this is day D. This is the day where that whole bug happened. Um, and then what we see is that after that day, um, well, they saw a serious increase in uh, keyword rankings. Uh, and that was during the 30 days after that, that day D um, that you really see this increase on all these, uh, in terms of rankings on all these keywords. And then it kind of staggers there and either stays there or for a series of keywords and it kind of dropped back down after 30 days. And they really saw that, um, yeah, everywhere. And so to come back on, the, on visibility, again, I, I ran the uh, visibility score on these same keywords. And if you look at the visibility, this is when that, that day D, and you can see that the visibility on this set of keywords just really peaked up, ramped up uh, during those 30 days, and then the effect after 30 days kind of died out gradually. Uh, and the same thing with category ranking. This app was ranking 120 in the sports category over here. Um, and again, after this whole, when they started to see those retention rates going up, um, well, they also saw the category going up and they actually reached position number seven in the sports category in India, which is something they'd never seen before. Um, and so that's really the, the peak the, that they, they reached. And that was actually about 30 days after day D. And, um, and they actually stayed and managed to stay up there a couple of days more. Uh, and then gradually, I think Google kind of realized that they weren't maintaining the same level of retention. And then, you know, that, then they kind of gradually went back down again. Um, and today, well, they, they've returned to the same level of visibility as they used to have, but they really told me like, um, it was, it was crazy. Like we've been doing ASO, we've been testing lots of different stuff. We've been updating our, our app regularly, but we've never seen a change that had such an immediate and such a strong impact across the, the, the store. Um, so yeah, it really means like retention. Well, obviously they didn't do this on purpose and I'm not saying you should have all your users uninstall and reinstall the app, but it's more like a great learning that they shared with us uh, that retention has a huge impact on, on rankings on Google. Uh, overall retention for your app is taken into account by Google for both keyword and category rank. Um, uh, and it's good to know that, you know, Google measures the retention at the keyword level as well. And so obviously apps with the highest retention on a specific keyword uh, will rank better for that word. So if a user finds your app 
downloads your app and then um, Google actually measures how long that user stays with your app after that download. Uh, and, and it can really calculate uh, the retention rate of your, your installs by keyword. And that's what you see in the uh, Google install keywords in your Google console. And so when you select a keywords, again, um, try to keep the keywords for which you have high retention. Have a look at what are the keywords with your highest retention in your Google console um, and make sure that those keywords you really focus on it and you keep them there because they have a significant impact on, on, on your, um, your keyword rankings. And last story uh, is about the impacts on, of tags on similar apps. This was, a, um, again, a story shared to us by um, one of our clients and heads up to Marek if he's listening. Um, but they shared this uh, story with us last week. So this is Questland. It's a really nice game on, on Android. Um, and uh, basically, uh, the idea is that on March 27th, they changed one of the tags that they had uh, for, their, uh, for their app. Um, and then we had a look at what impact that had in terms of similar apps. And so what you see here, what we're showing here is these, this is a list of similar apps that appeared on the Questland app listing. So the apps that, you know, Google typically recommends as, you know, you, you might also like or similar apps. Um, this is a list of apps that appeared on the app listing before they did the change. And then on the 27th, they changed one of their tags. And this is the list of apps that was appearing in their similar apps that the, the day after. And so you can see that really quickly, um, these apps totally changed and uh, suddenly Google was suggesting a different set of apps uh, for on the app listing of on the Questland app listing. Um, and what was interesting, it's not only on, you know, the apps that appeared on the Questland app listing, but then we also had a look at, um, you know, on which apps Questland appeared in similar apps. And so this here is the list of apps um, where you could find Questland among the similar apps um, for, these, for these apps. Uh, and again, we saw that um, right after the change, well, suddenly uh, Questland started to appear in the similar apps of other apps and started to stop appearing the similar apps of previous apps it used to be visible on. And so that's something that's really um, interesting to monitor. Now, of course, there's very little that you can do with tags. It's not a very actionable element. Um, but it's still, it is important that you monitor when you do a, a tag change, that you monitor the impact it can have. And so, um, again, at Apps, we, we kind of estimate the number of views that your app is getting from similar apps that point towards you. Um, and so here we see that, um, uh, well, actually the change in tag uh, had like a kind of a negative impact in terms of visibility um, in the sense that uh, when they implemented the tag change, um, they used to rank, they used to be the number one similar app uh, of Raid Shadow Legends, uh, but after the tag change, they dropped to number seven, uh, which is obviously a less, much less visible position. And so um, we estimate that translates into a loss of 3,500 daily views. Um, the same thing uh, with AFK Arena. They used to be number three in the similar apps of AFK Arena. Uh, and now they're no longer in that apps, uh, similar apps uh, anymore. And again, we estimate that translates into a loss of about a thousand um, daily views. Uh, so again, my message here is more like, well, be careful. Um, uh, there's not much you can do, but at least monitor and measure the, the impact of your changes so that you know what, what, what's happening. Um, and just for the sake of it, I, I always like to show at least two examples to kind of show this isn't like an isolated case. Um, this is an app that's actually from AppTweak. It's an expert experimental app that we have. It's a word game, but I won't disclose the app. So again, this is like an invented icon. Um, uh, and again, what we did here is on March 24th, we totally changed the tags of, of this app. And so we changed three out of four tags. Um, and again, you can see that these were the apps that Google was suggesting as similar apps for our app. And the next day, the day after the change, uh, well, you can see that the apps that Google was suggesting for our app was that were totally changed and really went from like totally different apps. Um, so again, tags have a direct influence on similar apps and they influence both the apps that you know, point towards you, your app and the apps that you point towards too. So it goes in both ways. Um, so make sure to monitor this uh, because it can be an extra source of visibility um, and what you want to try and do is be number, like be first on 
apps that have high traffic uh, and apps that are also relevant for your app as well. Um, and yeah, I guess that, that's it. Um, that's all I have to say today. Um, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to say that all the uh, data that I've been showing um, is data that comes from AppTweak. So feel free to book a demo um, with us uh, so we can kind of showcase um, extra. Oh, I see I have the same t-shirt as on my photo. That's nice. Um, it's not done on purpose. Um, but yeah, so feel free to book a demo and we've got a special offer for all the ones that have been listening. Uh, you can use a APS 30 code and get a 30% discount. Great. And I think that code's also on the, your talk page on the uh, Hey Summit site we've got, yep. got set up for this. Um, have you got time for a couple more questions? Yeah, sure, sure. So one related to the uh, retention stuff you were just talking about is um, uh, this is from, um, let me find it here, um, in amongst the keyword. Well, oh no, it was in the chat, that's right. Um, which was, oh yeah, from James Collins. How, how does, is retention defined? Um, you know, is it active use of your app? Is it the time between install and uninstall or is it something else? Yep. So, um, I, uh, there's a, like, I think Google measures two things. Um, one, so the retention that I was talking about here, um, is basically, uh, people who downloaded your app on, on day D, how many of them still have your app installed after one day? And then how many of them still have your app installed after seven days, 30 days and so on. That's the retention that I was talking about. Um, however, I know that Google also measures the activity of your users. So I, I haven't talked about that in, in my speech, but um, that is also something like user engagement, the number of time uh, people open your app or engage with your app, that's also something that Google takes into account. And um, if, if people never open your app again, that does have like kind of a bad, um, give a bad feedback to the Google algorithm. Got it. And um, a couple of questions on tags. Um, he's asking which, which Ivan is asking which tag did they change with the, the Questland example? Um, yeah, I don't have that info, uh, so I, I can ask the client. Um, but uh, yeah, they didn't tell me. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I, I anyway, I don't have the info, but right. I'm not sure I would be able to. And another that. tag question is could the decrease in visibility as a result of changing a tag be a matter of brand awareness if people don't recognize the tags? Um, not sure I get that mm. one, but okay. I, so basically the tags, how they work is that, um, it, it, it kind of gives Google extra information as to how you want your app to be associated. Um, and so Google use these tags to then see, okay, what are these apps that I'm going to associate with this app? So when you change, but the tags, they, an example of tag is like a racing game or a puzzle game or word game. It feels like, okay, my typically with the, this little word game here, we would put the tag like educational, puzzle, uh, word game, um, something else, uh, brain, brain training, for instance. Those would be the tags. And then we would change them to um, like, yeah, totally different uh, tags as well. So it's not that much on, on brand recognition, I guess. Um, it's really about um, which apps Google is associating you to. And if you were number one on a similar app, of a very popular app, uh, well, obviously that popular app is getting a lot of traffic. And so that's giving a lot of traffic to your app that's in that app listing. Great. Um, well, I think we, what, there's quite a few more questions that you could probably talk about, do a whole session on keywords. People love the keyword questions. It's a, a big topic. People asking about icons, people asking about more, <laughs> more questions on like actually how you, you do this testing. What I suggest is Suzanne, uh, from your team has helpfully chucked in a calendar link. You've right. got the kind of demo options here. I suggest um, what everyone should do is book in a, a Calendly, you know, get, you know, get a 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever the slot is with you guys and uh, talk through maybe your tool a bit more. There are even a few questions about, yeah, app tweak. What can it do? Can it, can it track competitors? Can it do this? I mean, the best way to probably do that is one-on-one. -on -one. So uh -huh. yeah, I'd encourage um, anyone who wants to uh, get a bit more um, advice to head over to that Calendly link and um, book a slot. And I know you guys, you know, really know your ASO. So yeah. And I guess, I guess more than a demo, 
like feel free you know to ask your ASO questions and we can really help out um, what's nice as well is that um, you can come with the problems that you have with your app and we can try and find uh, special insights um, you know using the tool we sometimes find out really interesting stuff so yeah feel free to book a demo and um, we'll be more than happy to answer questions and kind of analyze and do a quick ASO uh, advice on, on your app as well. That's great. All right. Well, I want to say uh, thanks a lot, Mel, for coming. That was great. And uh, yeah, really good insights. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's always moving ASO and it's good to hear like people are, you know, understanding a bit more about the, the, the Google Play algorithm and uh, helping uh, us to all improve the visibility so yeah i really appreciate that and uh we've got next up we've got one more talk today uh it's on app engagement so that's starting at uh, two uk time need to mention it's uh, uk time if anyone here is uh, feeling social um there is a link somewhere maybe i can post it in the chat to the uh, networking um room um maybe that's i posted in the app anyway so i'll, I'll maybe share it on the next tool uh, which Andre from uh, Mobile Marketing Experts is running. So you can jump in there and uh, have a chat with some people and uh, make some friends. And uh, yeah, we'll see you at two, hopefully. Also next week, we've got some more content. We've got content on uh, Google, um, guy from Google. We've got uh, hopefully someone from Spurs talking about how they launched their app. So there's a lot more going on next week. So for now, thanks again to Mel and uh, see you later. Thank you, James. Thanks so much. Bye, Bye. guys.